what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we shall discuss on a very important topic one of the fundamentals and the name of the topic is yoga karakas okay what is the meaning of the word yoga karaka what does it do and why at all is it called yoga karak and what is the inner meaning of that word all right for some ascendants because every ascendant does not have a yoga karak planet okay and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you find is the yoga karaka for your ascendant working or not <laughs> and if you're new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a personal consultation then approach me in my website in the link below very good license and if you want me to make any other video then please let me know in the comments and some of you have told me to make videos on kaliyug and second marriage third marriage yes i'm going to make videos on all of them okay and this systematically i'm making so i don't want that the progression is disturbed so i'm making everything so just be patient everything will be there in the menu all right and you can choose whatever you want to eat <laughs> and if you like this video click the thumbs up at the end of course after seeing till the end now what is the meaning of the planet or the word yoga yoga means that's not yoga actually it's yoga the britishers have added a everywhere <laughs> actually it's yoga not yoga okay so the word yoga means if you go to mathematics yoga vyog all right yoga means plus addition vyog means minus oh my god this is about yoga not about vyog <laughs> so addition means adding something to our life yes that is the meaning of the word addition 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 so that means yoga means that we add something to our life by which our life in improves our happiness increases and ultimate yoga is uh, when we add god into our lives yes that that is the reason why in gita the systems are known as yoga bhakti yoga gyan yoga karma yoga ashtang yoga all these different yoga Uh, yog sutras are there okay so now yog karak means the planet which helps the ascendant because yog karak is for a particular ascendant all right so yog karak means that planet for every ascendant or for some ascendants which helps in bringing auspiciousness to the chart all right depending on their placements of course now that is the meaning of the word yoga karak now what's the astrological meaning astrologically if any planet in any chart rules a kendra and a trikon simultaneously okay kendra are the angular houses which is the first fourth seventh and tenth houses and then trikonas are the first fifth and ninth houses all right so if a planet is simultaneously ruling a kendra and a trikon then that planet is called yog karak all right that means what is happening is the kendras relate to our physical existence the things which we do in this world and trikonas means those things which are already there inside us but we may or may not necessarily use them that is the difference between kendra and trikon people say oh planets in kendras are good trikonas are also good this is bad that is good but they don't know what's the difference between kendra and trikon this is the difference that planets in the kendra will have very much prominence in our life and planets in trikonas will have prominence within ourselves internally as a person all right because the trines deal with the dna the fifth house is the house of children and ninth house is the house of the father and lagna is we ourselves yes and then we have the pillars the kendras we the first house our health our appearance our intelligence that is what is the lagna and then we have the fourth house which is the house of our settlement home comforts mother pleasure etc and then we have the seventh house which is the house of sexuality love romance although that's the fifth house but all the action happens in the 7th house and then it's the house of marriage and also other people public platform and then we have the 10th house which is our status work karma primary activity that we do in this world so now what happens when a planet rules a trine and an angle simultaneously what happens is 
see whenever a planet is ruling a trine a trikona what it means is that that planet the traits the karak tattvas which that planet represents those things which are carrying we are carrying from our past lives yes and then when the planet is also ruling a kendra what it means that we will be using those traits also in our life which is considered to be very good because that is like from the past we are bringing something into this life now that depends on the placement of the planets i mean the yog karakas and to the degree they are placed prominently to that degree it will be decided to what extent will uh, we be using those traits okay so now for the ascendants of mars mercury and jupiter there are no yog karaks which means for aries ascendants for scorpio ascendants for sagittarius for pisces and gemini and virgo we do not have any yog karakas all right because for these ascendants there is no planet which simultaneously rules a kendra and a trikon all right that is not possible so they do not have yog karakas but for the other ascendants we have yog karakas all right so for the ascendants which are ruled by venus that means for taurus ascendant and libra ascendants in both the cases saturn becomes the yoga karaka planet which means for libra saturn rules the fourth house which is a kendra and the fifth house which is a trikon and for taurus ascendants again saturn rules the ninth house and the tenth house because ninth house is a trikon and tenth house is another kendra and then for leo ascendants mars becomes a yoga karaka same is for cancer ascendants yes that means for leo and mars Uh, Leo and uh, Cancer, Mars is the yoga karak for both these ascendants, and then for the ascendants which are ruled by Saturn, we have Capricorn and Aquarius. For Capricorn, Venus rules the fifth house and the tenth house, and for Aquarius, Venus rules the fourth house and the ninth house. That means for the ascendants ruled by Saturn, Venus becomes yoga karak. So that means we have only three planets which are yoga karakas actually. That is Saturn. mars and venus all right and we have these six ascendants for which we have yog karaka planets because for the other six which i described earlier there are no yog karakas now we have to understand why are these planets given the position of yog karakas in the chart just because you see a libra ascendant and you say or a taurus ascendant and you say that oh saturn is a yog karaka yes but it doesn't make sense like that why why at all saturn is a yog karaka there why why is not mercury a yog karaka yes why is not sun the yog karaka why is not moon the yog karaka why is not mars the yog karaka there because saturn and venus now although saturn is a natural malefic but saturn and venus are friends but that is not the reason only why they are yog karakas i mean in the case of venus ruled ascendant saturn is the yog karaka and for saturn ruled ascendant venus is the yog karaka yes because they help each other's agenda very much yes in some areas not in all areas <laughs> the areas which they help each other is in the areas of giving service to other people that means for libra ascendants and taurus ascendants it is very important they that whatever they do in this life i am not talking of career here anything in they do in this life they deal with marriage relationships or they deal with children or with father or mother or their education or their career anything they do the taurus and the libra ascendants they must always take into consideration the traits of saturn irrespective of wherever saturn is placed in the chart irrespective of that why because yoga karaka is for the ascendant that means this planet will help the ascendant to achieve its goals wishes hopes and desires in a better way what is the goal of venus the goal of venus is to get you married <laughs> in short all right that's the goal of venus and then saturn also gets directional strength about which i have not talked i'll make a video on that the next video maybe or the next to the next the next video is on badaks so for getting married you need to check the seventh house Yes, and Saturn gets digbali there. Direct has directional strength in the seventh house, which means Saturn helps to maintain marriages for long time, committed, uh, committed marriages. All right, 
that means now i'm not talking of marriage here i'm talking of the traits of saturn and venus there are many similarities in both that is why they represent uh, friendships friendships means they are planetary friends yes and mercury venus are friends in a way that they both represent socializing yes so for that mercury and venus are also friends but when it comes to mercury and saturn it represents more of the structure sacrifice commitment and being duty bound all these things are represented by venus and saturn so whenever libra ascendants are always taking into consideration the uh, the traits of saturn in their life you will feel that you are very happy on the other hand if you don't take the traits of saturn into consideration you may feel that your life is miserable all right which means whatever libra and taurus ascendants do they should always have the vision of doing it for long term they should have consistency in that otherwise they may face difficulties because they are not taking into consideration the position of the yoga karaka yes now then you go to the ascendants which are ruled by saturn capricorn and aquarius so for them venus becomes the yoga karaka yes so then these ascendants should always take into consideration what other people want yes other people means venus represents other people because it's the original seventh house although it represents the opposite sex also but seventh house is generally interactions and with other people so if capricorn and aquarius become too much self obsessed self focused all right self focus doesn't mean you have to uh, not work on yourself and you have to just keep seeing oh he got this she got that why i didn't get no that is wrong what i am saying is you also should think about other people when you do actions when you take into consideration some of your activities otherwise venus uh, as the yoga karaka will not be functioning and then it will not be able to bring auspiciousness into your chart all right now for the uh, ascendants leo and cancer see basically what leo and cancer is they represent the king and the queen yes and for them the king and the queen to execute their orders they need the help of the soldier which is what mars <laughs> so that is why mars becomes a yoga karaka that means the lesson for the ascendants of leo and cancer is whenever they are going to do anything in life they have to be a bit forceful sometimes forceful means that they have to behave in ways which may require the traits of mars which means to be a bit aggressive that doesn't mean you go on killing people or you go on uh, a rampage like hitler did in germany i'm not saying about that i am saying that if you behave as a leo or as a cancer that uh, you behave like oh this is not happening so let it let me let it go on or let god decide what will happen no then it will not work like that because then what happens you will uh, miss you you will miss the traits of mars which means you are missing out one kendra and one trikona yes that means these traits of mars have to be used you have to be bit strong when you do something when you decide that that's how the king is right the king has to be strong now if the king makes some decisions and then if suppose 10 people say oh we object to you know we don't know agree what you are doing is right uh, then if the king is like oh my god what will happen uh, they will kill me no the king cannot behave like that the king has to say yes i have made this decision you have to follow that's it yes <laughs> otherwise he will not remain a king because if the king doesn't have soldiers who can protect him and who can punish others then the king will not be king anymore yes what's the difference between you or me and a king is that they have a group of army that's the only difference <laughs> if they don't have an army then they are not the king right we also may become king one day so that means whenever now this does not mean that the leo and cancer ascendant should go and crush other people no it doesn't mean that it simply means that the traits of leo and cancer can be best fulfilled because ascendant represents your whole life right every area of your life will de de demand the traits of the ascendant even if your ascendant is leo now you may say okay my uh, 12th house is the uh, sign cancer so maybe i don't need the traits of leo there no you will still need the traits of leo when it comes to every house and for that you also have to take into consideration mars i mean it's bit better if they take that into consideration yes and then their life will become much more happier they will feel more fulfilling they they, they will feel more fulfillment in that they will feel that i am able to do and achieve things in a much better way than i would do without mars yes now see uh, what happens is 
the trines represent activities from the past lives and some blessings of the gods also of the pitris of the ancestors as they say fifth house is the house of purva punya yes and ninth house is the blessings of the pitris the father and your lineage actually and then when that same planet becomes the ruler of a kendra also that means that those traits which ha we have been blessed with we can bring them into this life which is the kendra actually because the trines will not do anything the activities are ruled by kendras yes so that means that means that the blessings or our habits or the good things that we have from the past can be utilized very properly in this life and that that gives us more happiness more fulfillment more joy more contentment more prosperity that is why they are given the positions of yoga karakas in the chart okay otherwise uh, it doesn't work that oh just randomly they have made this planet as the yoga karaka it doesn't work like that okay and you also have to know how to use the yoga karakas for example now people will say oh if the yoga karaka is in 6th house 8th house or 12th house or it is debilitated then what it means so well, it simply means that those traits are there in you but you are not going to use it it simply means that yes so and also sometimes there can be some situations when they come in the kendra or the trikona but they can get debilitated for example if a libra ascendant has saturn which is the yoga karaka the ruler of the 4th and 5th sitting in the 7th house yes then you will say oh my yoga karaka is in kendra yes you will say that right <laughs> but in kendra in the 7th house for a libra saturn becomes debilitated so which means that although those traits are there in you and you are using them you still have not mastered them fully you have to still work on them but you have done sufficient homework on those traits because of which that planet has become a, a kendra adhipati and a trikona adhipati simultaneously yes but when it's debilitated it simply means that and if it is in the kendra like in the case of saturn for a libra ascendant it means that those traits will be used but still you have to work on them you have not worked uh, to such an extent that they could be in a friend sign or in their own sign or in mul trikona or in exaltation yes but those traits are inherently relatively much more stronger than for any other ascendant which has a debilitated saturn yes so saturn for libra and taurus is inherently very strong because it is ruling a kendra and trikon because it's ruling a trikon that means you have been working on your saturnian traits from past lives all right so having a debilitated saturn in the 7th house for libra ascendant is much more stronger than for any other ascendant similarly like for uh, taurus ascendant also okay and sometimes the yoga karaka can be also in exaltation that means that you are, you will be using those traits beautifully yes and if it is outside the kendra you may not use them although it's exalted <laughs> so now for libra ascendant if saturn gets exalted in the lagna itself then you will be using the traits of saturn very much the ex indian prime minister atal bihari vajpayee has this placement if i am not wrong saturn exalted in libra in the first house which means the yoga karaka is in exaltation yes and for him saturn also rules the fourth house and fifth house which because of which it is a yoga karaka of course for libra that means the fourth house which represents support of the masses yes that was very strongly there with him and fifth house is the house of fan following fifth house is the house where people come and say oh wow what a great person he is <laughs> so that is why uh, any indian you ask they may say that yes vajpayee ji was indeed a very nice person all right oh my god now maybe this person is a bjp supporter no 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 <laughs> i am not a bjp supporter so the things which i am trying to explain here is that what does it mean when you say that that planet is a yoga karaka it simply means that those traits have been used in the past lives because of which it's ruling a trine and because it's ruling a kendra also that that means that there's a possibility depending on the placement of that planet we will also use them in this life and then if you do that it's very good and then you have to see everything it's in debilitation or exaltation in mul trikon etc okay and always remember for these three ascendants i mean the these three planet ruled ascendants uh, that is uh, four ascendant that is leo cancer and the venusian and the saturnian ascendants we have the yog karakas okay saturn mars and venus so take care that you use these traits properly and see now one other thing i would say not only regarding the ascendants now suppose 
your Venus is in the sign of Leo. Then for Venus, which is in Leo, you treat that as the ascendant. Then what happens? Mars again becomes your Karak. Yes. Do you understand the game here? So suppose Jupiter is in the sign of Cancer. Then for you, Mars again becomes your Karak, not for the ascendant, for Jupiter. That means whenever you are going to use the traits of Jupiter, you have to use Mars. If any planet is in Leo, for them it is very good to use the traits of Mars. Or even if the, uh, there are any planets in Cancer. Because for that planet, when you make that as the Lagna, they, again you get your Karakas. So if any planet is in Libra or Taurus, it's very important you use Saturnian traits pertaining to that planet. Yes? Then only that uh, planet will function properly. So don't use this only for the Lagna. Use the yoke concept of yoke Karaka for every planet because every planet will be placed in a particular sign. Then you will come to understand your chart better. Then you will understand why I am lacking in that planet. So for example, if suppose your Venus is in Libra. Okay, then you may think, oh, uh, yeah, Venus is in Libra. I can just go hang out with people. I can meet 10 different women every day. I can enjoy with them. I can do this. I can do that. No, if you do that, you will be the most miserable person I know. Why? Because when you put Venus in Libra, Saturn becomes the Yokara, which means you have to stay with one woman for the rest of your life. So now you understand what is the meaning of <laughs> Venus in Libra. You, you, you are not allowed to go uh, and just uh, hang out with uh, multiple women every day, every night. Okay. So then you will suffer. <laughs> All right, so that is what I wanted to say regarding your Karakas. Use it from the Ascendant, from the Sun, the Moon, from Venus, from Jupiter, Mars, for everything you have to use your Karakas. Okay, don't just use it for the Ascendant. All right, so that is it from my side. If you have any questions, queries or comments, then please let me know in the comment section. And if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed, then please subscribe to it and click the like button. And if you want a consultation, then approach me in my website below okay until next time the new year is almost around the corner wish you good luck bye bye nice to see the yoke cards okay so now go and analyze for which planet which is the yoke card okay until next time bye bye see you